Right, so recently there was a report from Shrimp Apple Pro telling us the A16 chip was going to stick to the 5 nanometer process and not go to the 4 nanometer process as initially predicted. And while Quona corroborates with this leak and gives us further details, and so let's delve into it, but first, make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. And with that being said, let's just talk in. So yes, Minchi Kuo also believes the A16 chip in the iPhone 14 Pro series is going to be based on a 5 nanometer process. And while he does give us major evidence behind this, namely TSMC's public announcements and the roadmap, and it basically says that significantly better 3 nanometer and 4 nanometer chips won't go into mass production till 2023. And so as a result, TSMC can only produce 5 nanometer plus chips or 4 nanometer chips for the iPhone 14 series. Now you may be wondering if the regular 4 nanometer process is available as we speak, why not use that for the iPhone 14 series? Well, allegedly there are no advantages to the 4 nanometer process over the 5 nanometer plus process. And so as a result, Apple is better off sticking to the tried and tested 5 nanometer plus process they used with the A15 chip. And yeah, Shrimp does mention 4 nanometer chips do have a very low yield rate. And so of course, right now when Apple wants these iPhones delivered to customers on time, sticking to the enhanced 5 nanometer process that of course they've already produced in bulk with the A15 chip is the better move. Now Quo does say the power saving and the performance upgrades with the A16 chip are going to be limited because of this and ultimately these small upgrades are really a marketing pool that of course gets consumers to get the pro models over the regular versions. And yes actually that's a pretty key point because Shrimp did suggest we could see this 5 nanometer A16 chip across all variants of the iPhone 14 series. But Quo does say that's not going to be the case. We are still going to see A15 chips in the regular models and this slightly better A16 chip is going to be in the iPhone 14 Pros. However, like I've said in the past, I do still think there's a very good chance the regular iPhone's A15 chip is going to be rebranded as A16 and then of course the Pro models get the A16 Pro chip. That way both versions technically have a new chip, at least on the marketing front, but the pros are clearly the superior product. So yeah, there's that guys, and while it did sound a little crazy initially that Apple was going to stick with the 5 nanometer process for 3 years in a row, what Quo tells us does make sense, and I do think there's a very good chance this is going to be the case. And yeah, for those worried about delays, Quo does once again tell us, no, that's not going to be the case. Everything is still on schedule for a September release. Anyways, let's delve into your thoughts regarding future iPhones. So Quinn says, at this point, they have to give us 120Hz with the base 14 because the only difference between the 13 and the 14 is going to be the difference in RAM. And actually, no, that is not the only difference. There are some other key upgrades for example, the cameras, we should see the rear cameras get the 13 Pro sensors, and that was a massive upgrade. We saw the Ultra get autofocus and macro modes, and also the regular wide lens had some nice improvements. But also the front facing cameras getting autofocus and a wide aperture, so for those who of course record videos and take selfies, that's going to be another nice improvement. We could also get a bigger battery inside, new modems, one more GPU core, so I do think the 14 has enough to be a decent upgrade over the 13 and of course, not need 120Hz. And personally, I don't see Apple giving us 120Hz on the regular models for the time being because number one, Apple calls 120Hz ProMotion and so giving the regular models a Pro feature would not make sense. But also, of course, if you take a look at the iPad lineup, the iPad Pros have exclusively had 120Hz since 2017, I believe. So yeah, I do think there's going to be a few generations of the iPhone Pro series that exclusively has 120Hz. And while that's a bummer for you guys, I personally could care less about 120Hz. And ultimately, I think most regular consumers buying the regular models could also care less about that. So Steve says... 
any word on if the A15 variant, the regular iPhone 14s are getting are from the 13 Pros. And yes, we do believe that's gonna be the case. So there should be a small GPU boost over the iPhone 13 from last year, which is pretty nice. So John says, six gigs of RAM is way behind 16 gigs of RAM from Android. And yeah, I see this comment all the time, but you've got to understand that iOS operates pretty differently from Android and does not need as much RAM. So six gigs, is plenty fine on the iPhone. I mean, I've also used four gig iPhones and they've never had RAM issues, but the same can't be said for Android phones that have a similar amount. And so yes, you've got to understand these operating systems are pretty different. So Mark says, will ProRes come to the regular iPhone 14? And unfortunately, no, I don't think that's gonna be the case. Apple does feature Pro in the ProRes branding, so that most likely is gonna remain as a Pro exclusive. And to be honest, with the Lightning ports, you're really not missing out on much. Yes, ProRes makes a difference, but transferring those massive files is a pain, so you're really not missing out on much. So Yahoo says, Apple lame AF for not giving us titanium. Now, of course, do remember there is still a chance we could see this with this year's models, but if we don't get it, then yes, I'm also gonna be pretty disappointed since titanium would be a lot lighter than stainless steel, which of course, for the Pro Max, would be a pretty nice upgrade since that phone is way too heavy right now. So of course, resolving the weight issues would be appreciated. But hey, if we don't get it this year, maybe we see it with the 15 series and the redesign we're most likely gonna get. But guys, tell me your thoughts on this report in the comments below. Anyways, thank you for watching guys. Make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. Check out Vicod above on details regarding Apple's VR headset. And on that note, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya peeps.